your forecast first. Sponsored by Natax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. All right, good evening to you. We are tracking a line of strong to severe storms. It is northwest of Peoria and then stretching back to south of Quincy in this area here. Monitoring things closely, you can see some of the deeper, darker reds, even some purple showing up in there as well. We've got a severe thunderstorm warning well north of Peoria. That's going to stay out of our neck of the woods, but this entire line is moving off to the east. And over the next several hours, we'll start to make impacts right here in central Illinois. Boy, it's warm out there. You can feel it. The mid and upper 70s right now. Look at St. Louis, third, 83 degrees. There is a severe thunderstorm watch in effect for about the western third of our viewing area here from Bloomington, including Decatur, Springfield, and Taylorville, along with Jacksonville. The latest on how the severe storm's impact is coming up. WCI 3 News starts right now. Now on WCIA 3 News. It's the first confirmed case of COVID-19 in a senior living facility in Champaign. Champaign County. I'll tell you what happens next. The last 24 hours has been the deadliest on record in Illinois during the pandemic. But there is some good news coming from today's numbers. And a lawmaker sued the governor over his stay at home order and won. How the governor says he's going to respond. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 5. Thousands of essential workers in Champaign County need protective gear, and now with your help, they're getting some. Good evening, I'm Jennifer Roscoe. Starting Friday, you will have to wear a mask in Illinois if you can't stay six feet away from someone, but they are difficult to come by. And tonight, we are collecting them for people on the front lines. And that's where WCIA3's Jessica Coons is right now. So Jessica, How's it going out there besides it being pretty nice right now? Yeah, Jennifer, we've had a beautiful day for this drive and we've had dozens of cars come through today. I want to show you something. So far today, we have filled up four of these bins with these homemade masks. Take a look at these. Think about all, all the hours of work that went into making those. Those masks are going to essential workers in Champaign County. That could be anyone from someone working in a grocery store to someone working in a food bank. People on the front lines, not in the medical field, but in other ways. Now, we have made it really Really easy for you to donate today. You can pull right up to these bins, stay in your car, throw your masks that are in a sealed plastic bag into the bin and drive off without having any contact with anyone. We are going to be out here until seven o'clock tonight. And Jennifer, as you said, some beautiful weather right now for it. We would be, ha we, we were talking about how do we know if this is a is a success. We were thinking if we had one mask, it would be great. And, and look at how many we have. Yeah, and we don't have a total count for how many masks are in there, but each bag has a ton of them. They're stuffed fill, full, and we've got four garbage cans full so far. All right, let's keep filling them up. Thank you. New tonight at five, Clark Lindsay Village in Urbana has its first positive COVID-19 case. It's a resident at the Meadowbrook Health Center. WCI3's Emily Braun is live in Urbana tonight. So Emily, how long have staff members been bracing for this news. Well, Jennifer, it's certainly the news that they hoped would never come, but they've been preparing for the possibility since the beginning of March, even before we saw the first stay at home order take place. And they said their priority from the very beginning was to be as careful and transparent as possible. They let people know right away as soon as they found out that this was a confirmed case. The resident is now in the hospital and it's not known when they will be able to come back to Clark Lindsay. The communications director told me now everyone at Meadowbrook Health Center will be tested as well as any staff members who were on site there. The CU Department of Public Health already came by to check out Clark Lindsay for an evaluation and based on the procedures they already have in place, they didn't recommend any further changes. The communications director told me it is upsetting though that even with every precaution taken, they couldn't avoid a case and even more upsetting because because their residents feel like family. Now, since, since March 17th, Clark Lindsay has been restricting all visitors from coming on site, and they have also been restricting residents from leaving the premises as well. We'll have more information on this tonight at 6 and 10. Live in Urbana, Emily Braun, WCIA3, your local news leader. Emily, thank you. And we are continuing to keep an eye on the number of positive cases at a long-term care center in Sangamon County. The Public Health Department says they are now able to do more tests at Villa's Senior Care Facility in Sherman. Health officials just revealed new numbers. They say more than 90 people have now tested positive. That's up from the 41 positive tests 
that were there yesterday. Five people have died. We have an update on the number of virus cases in the state. We've had the highest number of deaths in a 24-hour period, 144. That brings the total to 2,125. There were more than 2,000 new cases for a total number of cases to around 48,000. The good news in all of that, nearly half of those who tested positive within the last two weeks have recovered. In the last two to four weeks, it's more than 60%, and more than four weeks weeks, more than 70% say they have recovered. Vermilion County has its first reported death. 18 people there have tested positive. Shelby County also has reported its first death. 10 people in that county are positive. To see more details on the cases in your county, download the WCI3 News app. And following up on the lawsuit over the governor's stay-at-home order, the Attorney General's office filed a motion to appeal and asked the appellate court to dissolve the lower court ruling. Today, the governor said he plans to move forward with his order and said the court order only applied to the House Republican who filed it. This ruling only applies to one person because it was only ever about one person. This was a cheap political stunt designed so that the representative can see his name in headlines. And unfortunately, he has briefly been successful in that most callous of feats. As absurd as this charade is, is we, we are taking this matter very seriously. Pritzker says he's confident the higher courts will rule in his favor. Another House Republican from Rockford announced his plans to file a similar legal challenge soon. We told you about the workers' compensation rule that gives essential employees protections during the pandemic. That has now been repealed. WCI 3's Cole Hankey has more. The Illinois Workers' Compensation Commission officially repealed a new rule that would have given all essential workers in Illinois the benefit of the doubt if they report that they got COVID-19 on the job. Groups like the Illinois Nurses Association praised the new rule, but others like the Illinois Manufacturers Association and the Illinois Retail Merchants Association did not. They filed a lawsuit, and a Sangamon County judge then blocked the new rule. Shortly after that, the commission voted to rescind the new rule. The current workers' compensation system uh, is fair and it's balanced and it allows individuals who believe they've been injured at work to file a claim. And there is case law and there have been cases where individuals have come down with an infectious disease and they have been able to get workers' compensation through the current system. The IMA said the Illinois rule was too broad, but they would still support groups like medical professionals and other first responders being protected under a similar rule. Reporting in Springfield, I'm Cole Hankey, WCIA 3, your local news leader. Other states like Minnesota and Missouri have changed workers' compensation rules to only include first responders. We've shown you the many ways people are thanking health care workers. Wait until you see how one man used his plane to do that. Plus, on Friday, you're going to have to start wearing one of those to public places. How will you invite grad is making sure the masks aren't the ones carrying the virus as well.